You may proceed to do your cross examination. <coughs> By way of indication, counsel for the county assembly, how much time do you need? Mr. Speaker, if he finds favor with you, we request two and a half hours. You request? Two and a half hours. We only make this request, Mr. Speaker, based on the scope of the issues covered by the witness. They are not issues we can address in a short time. Our main witness, I think, was cross-examined for a similar amount of time. It's only fair for purposes of equality of arms. Let's try one, a, one and a half, and then we'll get it from there. The Honorable Governor Mongaza, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. Would you agree that the cultural structure and values and attitudes of the Mount Kenya community are substantially similar, even though there may be small details of variation? No. So it is your case, the culture of the Ameru, Aembu, and the Agikuyu are vastly different. Yes. Are their languages also vastly different, or are they substantially mutually intelligible? Different. Are they mutually intelligible? No. I put it to you, Kawira, that anyone who lives in this country actually knows there isn't much difference in the cultures, values, and attitudes of those three communities. What do you say to that? There is difference because, for example, in Meru we have Jorincheke. Do the Kikuyus have Jorincheke? They have Kiyama, and I'm sure you know even the Jorincheke is also called Kiyama. It's just a difference of names. Anyway, Governor Kawira Mwangaza is the governor of Embu a man or a woman? A woman. To the best of your knowledge, is this woman governor being hounded out by some misogynistic male leadership? Unless she's the ear to testify, I cannot testify. To the best of your knowledge, has the woman governor of Embu been impeached three times? Has she faced three impeachment motions in the last one year? I know of one Anwar Iguro who was impeached twice. Let's 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 stick to Embu for now. Has the governor of Embu faced the re-impeachment motions in the last one year? No. Nakuru equally as a woman governor, right? Yes. It has a huge population of Mount Kenya diaspora, true or untrue? True. Has that woman governor in Nakuru faced three impeachment motions in the last one year? No. Kwale as a woman governor, true or false? True. The people of Kwale are Bantus, just like the people of Mount Kenya, correct or incorrect? Correct. Has that woman governor faced three impeachment motions in the last one year? No. Oma Bay, which is a different cultural area, as a woman governor, correct or incorrect? Correct. Has she faced any impeachment motion in the last one year? No. As a matter of fact, Mary itself, as an elected woman MCA, correct or incorrect? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, has that woman MCA in Meru encountered any backlash from a toxic masculinity to hound her out of office? Several times. Have you adduced that evidence anywhere in your response? No, because it was, it was not part and parcel 
of my response. Mary was a woman representative, correct or incorrect? Correct. In fact, you yourself were a woman representative of Meru for a whole five years. Yes. Did anyone try to recall you because you are a woman? No. Good. Let's go to, you just told Mr. Speaker, it's more common story in Meru. Tell me whether you know of this story, which is also very common in Meru, of a woman who would beat her husband, then scream, and because the society is socialized to think it is the man beating the woman, they, and she has locked the house, people would think it is the man who was beating the woman, while the truth was the other way around. Have you ever heard of that story? No. Of course, you've never heard of it. Because it's not convenient. <laughs> Let's agree, Governor Kawira. For argument's sake, for argument's sake, without conceding, let's agree the MCAs are indeed acting under the influence of external people. Would that mean your sisters never received the monies we allege? Pardon? If we, are, we, we temporarily agree for argument's sake that the reason the MCAs have impeached you all these times is because of toxic masculinity and evil motives and malice and whatnot, we want for argument's sake in my next series of questions to work on the assumption that that is true. If the MCAs are malicious, would that be an answer to why your sisters were receiving monies irregularly from the county? No. If the MCAs are intimidated or influenced, would that be an answer to the count on usurpation of statutory functions of the County Public Service Board? No. Indeed, Governor Kawira, the motivations of the MCAs, you will agree, are therefore irrelevant as long as there is evidence in support of the charge. There is no support in the charge. Th that's for the Senate to decide, but assuming there is evidence in support of the charge, is it your position the charge would fail because even though there is evidence the MCAs are driven by an ulterior motive? Is that what you're inviting the Senate to do? Assuming the Senate believes you're an innocent victim of evil machinations, does that undo the evidence against you on the charges? The charges should have evidence. If they have the evidence, my question is, would evil intentions on the part of the MCAs undo that evidence? Would the evidence cease to exist because the MCAs are acting maliciously? No. The answer is? No. No. So you will agree with me, therefore, the case against you should be decided on the evidence, not on the motivations of the MCAs. Yes, on the evidence. Thank you very much. That's a very useful answer. Let's go to the complaint by Celestia. Mr. Speaker, that would be 
from page one of volume two. You just told the Senate that the reason you did not account for the entire 78 million is because the motion only related to your sisters. Is that still your position? Yes. Did you read volume two as you read the impeachment motion? Where is the volume two? Did you read the battle that contains the assembly's evidence? The evidence is the IFMIS extract by Salesio. Correct. Yes. In fact, the impeachment motion says the evidence is in the complaint by Salesio. Correct or incorrect? Correct. It would mean, therefore, the impeachment motion must be read together with the complaint by Salesio. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Can you refer to paragraph 11 of the motion? Eleven A, can you read it to the Senate? Yes, I can read. Read it for us. Eighty seven of sixty eight. Evidence of the governor engagement, convenience and complicity in the proceeding. Two, gross violation of the Constitution. Three, two, gross misconduct. Three, gross abuse of office to be found in a complaint by Duranira Saresio Mutuma to Ethics and Corruption Commission on 11th August 2023. So you agree you are given sufficient notice that the assembly will be relying on the complaint by Celestia in the motion itself. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Fair enough? Incorrect. We, we said it's okay, we can live with your answer. But let's go to the, to the complaint by Celestia. Can you go to page 4, volume 2? What does it say? At 2.5? Four for you. It refers to Kadure Rukaria Catherine, isn't it? Yes. It is therefore correct that you had prior notice there is a complaint by Celestio regarding payments to this particular person. Kadure Rukaria. Did you or did you not receive this page four, volume two, Governor Kawira? Either you did or you did not receive it. I want to see the charge first because the charge talks about embezzlement of funds by it, relatives. Yes, we, we move from the charge to the evidence where you are already referred to the complaint by Celestio. The complaint has to be read in its entirety. The, 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 the author of the IFMIS report Celestio in the IFMIS report, we have more than 100 persons who have received the funds. And all these 100 persons are persons working in your office, correct or incorrect? And these 100 persons are not mentioned in the impeachment Fair motion. enough, fair enough, Governor. Do these 100 persons work in your office? I'm Either they sure. do or they don't. I'm not aware of everyone who works in my office. Good. But does page 17 indicate these are transactions by persons who work in the office? At the top of page 17, does it show 
that these are transactions by persons who work in the office. Currently, county government of Meru, we have 6,000 employees, and I cannot know every person by name. Uh, Governor, unfortunately, you don't have the luxury of ducking my questions. My question is, does this if miss indicate in black and white that these are transactions by persons working in your office? I don't think Either it does or it doesn't. I don't think so. Can you read the top, the very first item on that page 17? Yes. Read it to the Senate. Vote. Vote. These are small ones I can't see. I don't mind if your assistant can read for you. Okay. She can read for you. Vote 3562, Meru, Office of the Governor. You will agree, Madam Governor, the document itself indicates it's about transactions in your office, not another office. In my office, Good. Fr from July 2022, when yes. I was not the governor of Meru. Yes, and while you were seated here, we pointed out only 12 transactions lie in the previous regime. All the others have happened when you were the governor, correct or incorrect? And that's why, Council, you want me to know everyone who, including those who worked in the previous regime from this document? Uh, you won't get away from this, Madam Governor, by being clever. Can you see page 17? You confirm the transactions begin on 1st July yes. when Kiraito was the governor, yes. right? Yes. And it follows like that, 1st July, 1st July, and when July ends, the next entries are for 20th September 2022. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Correct. You are the governor as at September 2022. Yes. It must therefore follow that for all these hundreds of transactions, all of them except the first 12, happened during your tenure as governor of Meru? Yes. Good. Let's go back to the complaint by Celestio. At page four, Celestio talks of withdrawals by Kadure Rukaria Kadrin. Correct or incorrect? Correct and he has analyzed them and most of them are indicated the payment description is not applicable correct or incorrect correct in your understanding of government accounting and pfm should public money be expended and the accounting description is not applicable Council, I'm not an accountant. You are the governor, unfortunately, so answer my question. As the governor of Meru, the way I understand is that after this IFMIS report, if it's a genuine one, of which I doubt, follows an audited report. Before me, if it was an audited report, which clears or rectifies any mess that is in IFMIS report, then it could be a question that I could be easily able to answer. Does the county government have access to IFMIS? Yes. In fact, your junior officials have credentials to IFMIS. Yes. Therefore, they could easily have just logged in and printed the correct IFMIS if your case is you doubt the authenticity of this one. Correct or incorrect? I repeat again that if Miss extract is not the final document. That's not that my question, like. Madam Governor. The question is, would your CEC finance, would your chief officer finance, would your own chief of staff, who is the accounting officer in your office, 
Do all these people have login credentials to IFMIS? Yes. Good. And therefore, when the assembly asked you to present the IFMIS extract, all your officials needed was to log in, print, submit. Correct or incorrect? There was a reply by the state. There is a reply answer my question. All they needed to do, if there was any reason to doubt the authenticity of this if miss, was to log in and print. Council, do the assembly rely on if miss? Madam Speaker, I ask that the witness answers the my question. Account. I don't want to have an altercation with her. I need your protection, Madam Speaker. Madam Governor, just answer the question, please. They have the right to print the... Yes, the and therefore you will, you will acknowledge all they needed to put this matter to rest if there was no embezzlement was to log in and print. Correct or incorrect? Correct. But instead of doing that very simple task, your CEC and your officials, what they did is to manually type their own figures instead of those on the system. Page 105 of your response. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Are you saying the document at page 105 of your response is a system generated? Report? This is generated from my office or from the Celestio? It is from your office. In response. It is in your response, Madam Governor. In my response, we are dealing with the IFMIS report by Celestio, the activist, or a report from my office. If I, if I unpack your own defense for you to answer the question, I don't know, Madam Speaker, who is answering questions. In your defense, you actually rely on the report by Celestio. And in addition, you have brought something you have manually typed, which is a parallel document, not the one from IFMIS. Council, you're insisting that she has typed and she's saying they did not. Can, can you re-ask the question so that she can answer that? On its face, the document in your defense, is it generated from IFMIS or is it manually typed? Because that should be clear from the face of the document. This is the summary of IFMIS payment. It is not an extract from IFMIS, is it or is it not? It is an extract of the IFMIS. Does it have a timestamp? Time on. And if timestamp? Yes. Where is the timestamp? Show it to us. Just the voucher number, the pay. I'm not talking about voucher numbers. I'm talking about a timestamp. System generated reports from IFMIS indicate when they were printed, when they were downloaded. They leave a footprint. Who keyed them and when? You will agree, Madam Governor, so that we save time. Your document is not system generated. And that's why I said you typed it. If you refuse to answer the question, I'll proceed and invite the Senate to make whatever conclusions it wants to conclude from that refusal. Council, you can put it to her and proceed. There? You can put it to her and proceed. Madam Governor, I'm putting it to you that you're refusing to answer this question. I'm not refusing to answer any question. I put it to you, you're dodging my questions. Which one particularly? Whether the report at page 105 of your defense is a system generated document or a document typed on a desk by someone. It's a system of a summary of if miss payment. We'll leave it to the Senate to see who to believe on that so that we don't spend all the time on one issue. At page 10 of our volume 2, 
How much money does Celestio say Catherine Rucaria irregularly withdrew from the vote for the office of the governor? 29, there is a total there. It is how much? Can you read it for the Senate? Grant total payment made by Catherine Rocaria, 29-018-714. How much does he give as the total that was withdrawn from your office during this period covered by the IFMIS? Grant total paid to the county government of Meru. Yes. That is one one eight eight million. That is the grant total paid to the county government. Read the exact figure. What is the exact figure? Eighty eight million six hundred nine thousand three seventy three. And he says the amount withdrawn by just one Catherine Rukari is what percentage of the total? It is indicated there in black and white. Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. Yes. Let's go to Lead and Cather, same page 10. Again, Celestio has outlined many payments where the description is not applicable. Correct or incorrect on the face of it? Correct. Let's go to page 12 that involves your sister. Salesius again listed all the specific payments to your sister, correct or incorrect? Correct. And again, most of them, the item description is not applicable. And on the if miss, the description is prepayment. Correct or incorrect? Correct. And what is the total amount this sister of yours? Two million seven hundred sixty-nine thousand. Is this amount smaller or bigger than the total amount for the impress you have submitted to the Senate? This amount here of two million seven hundred and sixty-nine is it smaller or bigger? than the amount you have accounted for. Let me see the, the booklet that I have accounted for. You have only accounted for 2.6 million, Madam Governor, <laughs> for all the relatives. And yet, for just one of them, the amount irregularly disbursed is 2.7 million. I'm putting it to you that the, 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 the sum of the amounts of money you have accounted for, for all your relatives, is actually smaller than the amount paid to just one of them, as per this document. And as per this document, which is an IFMIS report, the audited report clears any error that is in this report. We have cases in this same report that you are referring to, some of the payments named as hospitality payment, which are hospitality surprise, hospital surprise rather than hospitality payments. Who will rectify the mess which is still in your evidence booklet, named as hospital surprise rather than hospitality surprise. Governor Kawira, who is, who, is are... who is responsible for inputting transactions on IFMIS at Meru County? PFM Act Section 103 gives the responsible person to correct the measures. It so establishes it, the CEC -E -C uh, finance is the end and it makes all decisions. And the Public Audit Act 31 spells out the audit process for documents to be tabled before parliament and assembly. So you will agree with me 
So this IFMIS report must go through the audit for us to get a final copy that can be relied by this honorable e Except house. that's not the question I asked you and I agree with you. But you agree the answer to my question is that it is your officials who enter the data in this IFMIS. Who is right now? You. Is it our officials or the activists? Answer the... my question, Ms. Madam Speaker, please. Answer what is your question? My question is whether it is county officials in Meru who keyed in the data on IFMIS. Uh, Governor? Yes, it is the county officials for our case. And therefore, you will agree with me if there is any misrepresentation of hospital as hospitality in IFMIS, the person that should take responsibility for that is your own officials, correct or incorrect? Correct, and that's why we have another process. I have received my answer, audit. Madam Governor. You have said it's correct. You have given an explanation that the reason your officials and relatives receive all these payments is by way of impressed. That's why on IFMIS it is captured as prepayment, isn't it? Yes. Are, are you aware an impressed is to be surrendered within seven days? Prepayment council is money requested for activities not done, and after the activities have been done, the accounting person accounts for every coin before receiving any other money. Again, you're dodging my question. The, the question. question is, was it, isn't an impress supposed to be surrendered and accounted for within seven days? Surrender of impress are surrendered within specific days? My question is very easy. By law, should an impress be surrendered within seven days? It's either yes or no. Should an impress be surrendered and accounted for within seven days? What's your answer, Madam Governor? I'm not sure if it's within seven days. Fair enough. You will also agree with me this report covers an entire year, financial year, July to the date, the last date there. Correct or incorrect? Correct. And therefore, if payments made in September last year by way of impressed still appear as prepayment, the only conclusion that arises is that those impressed were never surrendered and accounted for. It is the only accounting conclusion that ensues, Madam Governor. Correct or incorrect? Incorrect. And the reason is that you cannot receive funds from the Treasury before surrendering everything that you received earlier on. As a matter of fact, Madam Governor, so that I show you you're a liar, can an officer be given an impress without accompanying hard cash? Repeat again. Is an impress given with, is an impress when an officer takes an impress. Aren't they given cash? Isn't that why it is indicated as a prepayment? Because they have been given cash to expand and later account. It depends whether the It is government... yes or no, Madam Governor. Can one be given an impress without a cash disbursement to them? Would you call that an impress? It is a prepayment. Pre Madam Your Governor, I put it to you. 
you and can't have it both ways. It is your case that all the reason these items appear as impressed on IFMIS is because they were by way of impressed. Isn't that your defense, Madam Council, Governor? Can you ask clearer? What, what, is it, do you, do you, what question do you want her to answer? The, the question, Madam Governor, which I'm putting to you is that your answer that officers take impressed and then later on, when money is disbursed from Treasury, they are paid. That is why they are paid several, they are peers. What is uh, the question? The Put, quest are you putting it to her or you asking I'm the putting it to her, Madam yes. Speaker, that your answer cannot hold, which you gave in chief, that the reason your relatives have several payments on the same day is because money is paid after the event and after there has been an accumulation. That cannot be correct because an impressed is, is always supported by hard cash. So it is given on cash basis. So the question of waiting for money does not hold, Madam Governor. These are prepayments and these are money requested for activities, not paid before. And when money arrives to the county government, they are paid. For example, if I'm traveling today from here to a certain destination, we will use our own resources and later surrender the documents for the person concerned to receive the payment. Let's Travers use your own example, Madam Governor, pause there. If you travel today on your own money, which will be refunded later, would you be given an impress for spending your own money? You'll be paid for spending That's your own money. That's not my question, Madam Governor. You're going on a trip, and we all agree it happens every day on your own money to be refunded later. Are you given an impress on that occasion when you're traveling on your own pocket to claim later? You will be given impressed if there are some goods you are required to buy on cash. And the amount of money that the council we are discussing is the office of the governor where there are no projects apart from the usage of money by way of travels and other things like purchase of items in the office of the governor. No project is done in the office of the governor. How else do we expect the office of the governor to work or to receive money if not by this form? I which did is, ask which you is any question, formula. Madam Governor, about projects. We are talking about. Can you, can you uh, wrap up on that question? And can you. Uh, I, I think the Senate might be able to appreciate the issue of impressed. Uh, I request that you move to the next question. Uh, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, my name is Moreru, and I have a few questions for the Governor. Madam Governor, we were told by the by your witness, the CEC for Legal and Public Service Management, that the originals of the surrender documents are with the auditors. Is that your position? Yes. And he told us that the originals that are with the auditors are signed. Is that your position? Yes. So if the originals are with the auditors and they are signed, where did you get these surrender documents that are not signed? Council, what happens after you surrender the impress? When you surrender the surrender of the impress, you have a voucher that is a 
in your documents attached to your files, signed, verified, and examined by an examiner. I think those are the documents you have. Are they examined and verified? No, the documents we have are not examined or signed by the director of accounts or by the chief officer of finance. And if your, if your testimony or your evidence is that the originals are signed and they are with the auditors, where did you get these copies that are not signed? Can you have two documents, one which is signed, the original, and another document that is not signed with respect to the same transaction? Of course, every person has to keep a record of what maybe you might be asked to give and give it out. So you would agree with me then that the documents you've provided here are not a proper record or representation of the documents that are with the auditors? And that's why we no, have... No, it's a yes-no question. Would you agree with me then that the documents that you've provided here, because they are not signed, and the ones that are with the auditors, the originals, are signed? then these documents, obviously, are not a proper representation or copies of the documents you submitted to the auditors. They are the same documents submitted to the auditors. Uh, Madam Speaker, I think at this point I'll invite the Senate to make the necessary conclusion. Governor, you can turn with me to page 295 of our volume two. And my first question, Governor, is whose responsibility is it, by law, to appoint chief officers? Is it your responsibility to appoint chief officers? No. By law, whose responsibility is it to appoint chief officers? Public Service Board. <laughs> Governor, maybe I can clarify there mm -hmm. that the position of the law, if you check Section 45 mm -hmm. of the County Governments Act, is that the governor appoints chief officers on recommendation of the County Public Service Board. Yes. The County Public Service Board advertises. Yes. They, they shortlist. Yes. They interview. Yes. Then they submit names. And in, in fact, in your case, they submitted three names for every department. Yes. To the governor for formal appointment. Yes. Correct? Yes. So who does the actual appointment? The governor. Yes. The document at page 295, now that you agree that it is the governor who formally appoints chief of staff as by law. You will then, you will agree with me, governor, that the document at page 295 emanates from your office it is signed by the county secretary for our excellence of the governor and it communicates your decision as governor to appoint certain individuals as chief officers, some in acting capacity, some in substantive positions, correct? Council, I would like you to... It's a yes-no question, governor, so that we move. There's no. So you have not appointed these persons? I have not appointed. Okay. I'll refer you then to number one, Naomi Kamunde that is appearing. Ca can you read aloud what the document says at number one? I want to read from slightly above number one. Okay, you can start there then. Redeployment. Okay. Redeployment, go ahead. Or maybe your assistant can In read for you. In order to improve on efficiency and effectiveness in the service delivery, the following changes have been agreed upon. Okay. Naomi Kamunde, to move from office of the governor, directorate of protocol, to perform, to perform functions of chief officer, office of the governor, awaiting substantive chief officer. Okay. Yes. So, by this letter, Naomi Kamunde is to move from the office of the governor, correct? Yes. And perform the functions of chief officer, mm -hmm. awaiting a substantive chief officer, correct? Yes. And we've agreed that the 
power to appoint chief officers resides in you as a governor. Is that appointment? No, we have agreed that the power to appoint resides in you as, in you as a governor, correct? Yes. Is it your position that in appointing chief officers in acting capacity, the governor need not consult the county public service board? In this case... No, it's a yes no question, governor. Is it your position that in appointing chief officers in acting capacity, the governor need not, the governor need not consult the county public service board. Is that your evidence? Who has signed this document? It is signed. Answer my question, um, Madam Speaker. I think at this point I'll seek your protection. May the witness answer the Madam question. Madam Governor, just answer the question. Sir. It's a yes. Repeat again. Is it your evidence that in appointing chief officers, in whatever capacity, whether substantive or acting, the governor need not consult? the County Public Service Board. Is that your evidence? When appointing a new chief officer. But when appointing a new chief officer. But so I take it me. that it is your evidence that when appointing a chief officer in acting capacity, the governor need not consult the County Public Service Board. That is your evidence. The County Secretary also has the powers. By, what, by which law? By which law? Show me the law. I am willing to be persuaded, Madam Governor, show me the law. What allows the county secretary to appoint chief officers? Not in to whatever appoint, capacity. But to redeploy. Governor, the question is not on redeployment. The question is on appointment. The question is on appointment. And turn with me to page 335. What document is on paragraph on page 335? Advisory on transfers and appointments. Okay. This is an advisory. An advisory by the County Public Service Board. Yes. At paragraph 2. Just read aloud what the County Public Service Board has advised all chief officers, because this is an internal memorandum, through the County Secretary as the head of public service. The County Public Service Board have advised the County Secretary and the end of public service, but not the Governor of Meru. Okay. Yeah. But we agreed that it is a function of the Governor to appoint Chief of Staff. We agreed on that. Section yes. 45. Yes. Okay. But go ahead there and is no Just go ahead advisory and go by the County Government or the County Public Service Board to the Governor. I agree. I agree with you on that. But I'm saying just read paragraph 2. Or do I read it aloud for you to agree? No, I should read. Okay. This is advisory to the County, Sub County Secretary and End of Public Service with respect to establishment of offices, appointments, including acting appointments to all levels of staff Please note that it is the sole statutory responsibility of the County Public Service Board as guided by the section, sections 59, subsection 1, A and B, 63 and 64 of the County Government Act 2012 to read together with the section 34, Act 2017 and section 16 and 23, PSC regulations 2020, any other appointments done outside this is deemed null and void. The County Public Service Board says that all appointments, including acting appointments at all levels of staff, is by law. And the laws are quoted there. It is the sole statutory responsibility of the board. Correct? Yes. So could you then, you or your chief or your county secretary, in the document on page 295 and 296, purport to appoint chief officers in acting capacity or substantive capacity. Could you purport to do so? 
or are you within the law in purporting to do so? That is my question. I am not the one that did this. The letter is clearly signed by the county secretary. But for who, the gov Madam Governor? The letter is signed by the county secretary for who? For the governor, correct? And the, and the appointment is issued in the, in the letterhead of the office of the governor, correct? At page 295. Where? At page 295, on the top of the page, the letterhead is office of the governor, correct? The letterhead for all the offices in my office have office of the governor, not this one specifically. No problem, but this one specifically is office of the governor. Yes. Is the county secretary... The council, sorry to interrupt. Thank you, uh, I would like to uh, alert all parties of the timelines that we are going to follow and we are going to strictly adhere to this. Uh, the cross-examination will end at 7.10 without any extra minute. The re-examination will start from 7.10 to 7.30. Uh, the clarification by senators will start from 7.30 to 7.50. And then we'll have the closing statement on behalf of the county assembly for 60 minutes from 7.50 to 8.50. Then we'll have the closing statement on behalf of the government for 60 minutes uh, from 8.50 to 9.50. And then from 9.50 to 10, we will have an in-camera in -camera session and uh, the Senate will then have a uh, debate on the motion and division between 10 and 11.50 p.m. So this is to alert you to just bear that in mind. Thank you. Very well. Very well, Madam Speaker. We are guided accordingly. So, Governor, back to my question. The specific letter on page 295 is issued in, your letter, in the letter of the office of the Governor. And we have agreed that the governor, as a, the governor is the appointing authority for chief officers, correct? Mm -hmm. Is the county secretary a st staff in the, office of the, in the office of the governor? The county secretary? Yes. And the public? Oh, is the county staff secretary? Staff in the county government of Meru. Staff in the county government of Meru. Yeah. You will agree with me that the county secretary is the head of public service yeah. and is therefore not a staffer in the office of the governor. Yes. Right? Yes. So, in as much as you might want to say that the county secretary was signing on your behalf, is not. The county secretary. Is not a staffer in your office, correct? The county secretary has signed the letter. For the governor, though he is not a staffer in your office, correct? Mm -hmm. Governor, turn with me to page 384 of our volume 2. Under paragraph four, that is the response by the county public service board to the clerk of the county assembly. You will agree with me that in that response, the county public service board states, and I quote, the board is the appointing authority according to section 64 of the county government act. Not disputed. And the board, however, was not involved in the appointment of the acting chief officers as per the act. You agree with me? At least that is apparent on the face of the document, correct? Maybe. You agree? I'm not the one that was writing to them. No, but you agree that is what the board says, Governor? That is yes, obvious. according to the letter. Okay. So the board, the County Public Service Board, actually disowns your appointment and says that the appointments of the 17 chief officers whom you, whom you have appointed on the 23rd of August, most of whom are in acting capacity, was done without its involvement. Correct? And to me, the board, the role of so the board... no question, Governor, so that we move. Answer. The role of the board is to give advisory to the end of county public service. But the role of the board is to give, is to recommend for appointment to you so that you appoint. The powers reside in you, 
not the county secretary. We agree on that, Governor. Mm -hmm. So, and the board disowns those appointments and says that you did not consult the board in making the appointments. You specifically, because you are the appointing authority. And I specifically did not appoint any person. I think. Madam Speaker, we are constrained to seek your direction because we believe the rules of cross-examination is that a witness answers questions, they don't tell stories, and the reason we seek your direction and perhaps invocation of your powers and the, the relevant standing order is that we believe this witness is engaging us in an out occasion, knowing very well our time is very limited, so that we don't have the opportunity to put to her all the relevant questions that we need to put. Uh, Madam Governor, please answer the questions just asked. Council, I have never appointed Ma Madam any Speaker, of these. Uh, Madam Speaker, just hold on. Council, can you ask the question and can she answer it? Madam Governor, my question is, the County Public Service Board has disowned your appointments. Not my appointments. Who is the appointing authority? The person who has signed here. So, Governor, are you saying you have abdicated your roles as Governor and you delegated your authority to appoint to the County Secretary? I have not delegated. So, who appointed these officers? Is it you or the County Secretary? The County Secretary. Okay. So, Governor, you're saying, you're saying, you're telling this Honorable House that as Governor, you can delegate your statutory authority to appoint the Chief Officers. Just a moment, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to show you, you can turn to our volume three, or maybe I can just show you. Our volume three, it's a, it's a small bundle with a green cover. The appointment of county chief officers. Governor, you will agree with me on 45, section 45, it reads as follows, that whenever a vacancy arises in the office of the county chief officer, the respective governor shall within 14 days nominate qualified and experienced county chief officers from among persons competitively sourced and recommended by the county public service board, and with the approval of the county assembly, appoint county chief officers. You agree? That is the law. That is the law, Governor. You agree? Council, I agree. Very well, very well, very well, well, Madam Governor. So, have you presented a valid authority before this House to show that you could validly delegate your authority to the County Secretary to appoint this Chief Officer on your behalf? The Acting Chief Officer. Is there an authority, is there an, is there an authority Madam Governor? Council, can from you? Your, from your documents. Let, you me, explain. To Let me explain, Council. Is there an authority, yes or no? This acting Madam chief Governor, is officers there an authority? are directors Governor, in the they, same They want office. a yes or no answer. Just answer whether you No one has been sourced authority. from outside. These are directors at acting capacity awaiting I think, Madam Speaker, I, I leave the Senate to draw uh, a conclusion on that question. Madam Governor, you can turn with me to page 68 of our volume 2. And for, purpose, for purposes of clarity, in your exam in chief, you stated that you did not travel to China, correct? Yes. You never traveled to China? I never. Did you seek clearance to travel to China? Yes. You sought clearance? Yes. But you never traveled? Yes. Okay. The document on page 68 says, and the question is, the persons in the letter that is signed by the county secretary 
makes reference to following the invitation of the of, of the governor 